Hello YouTube, this is Frank from Architectural Aesthetics. Today in this video I would like to talk to you about how to add context to a software-generated perspective architectural render using Photoshop. Now the project you're seeing on the screen right now was created two years ago when I was still in my undergrad. To be more specific, it was a proposal for a community center in the Trinity Bellsford Park in Toronto. Unfortunately, all I have regarding the project right now is a high quality render generated using Autodesk Revit. And I thought it would be interesting to turn this into an exercise where I would add context such as ground, sky, entourage, plantations, and etc. into the composition using Photoshop to see how much I can suspend the audience's disbelief and touch on some of my personal experience regarding using Photoshop for architectural visualization along the way. So without further ado, let's get into today's content. So the first thing I did in this exercise, or in the case of photoshopping any perspective render in general, was to locate the vanishing points. For this particular image, you can see that it has a very unconventional three points perspective going on. So what I did was to mark the single vanishing point that was visible in the composition on a separate layer and sort of eyeball the other two vanishing points throughout the photoshopping process. And the next thing I did was to add some ground element to firmly plant the building onto the ground. Since we're still relatively early in terms of the whole visualization process, I wasn't too concerned with the details. And what I did was to place a large area of grassy ground and patched it up with the ground color seen in the Revit generated render image. Again, the idea is really to fill the whole composition as quickly as possible because when you have large areas of blank canvas showing, you don't even know where to work on and your brain sort of just freezes. So our goal here is really to fill the canvas with large blocks of elements and leave the fine tuning for later. Alright, the next step is to add some vertical elements. A little bit of background information about the project. The site of this proposal is to be embedded in a sloped topography. And my solution was to completely excavate the footprint of the building and block up the whole plot with retaining walls. And of course, this design decision was questioned by my professor during the review. However, let's not concern ourselves with the technicalities and really focus on how to make a good render. As you can see, I started off by placing an image of a retaining wall I found on the internet and placed it in using the transform tools. Of course, the texture mapping is all wrong. To be more specific, the blocks of stones look incredibly large. But at this point, I just needed it to function as a placeholder. In following our philosophy of filling the canvas in as quickly as possible, the next logical step is obviously to fill the sky. As you can see, I experimented with several sky images, and none of them really fitted this particular composition. So what I ended up doing was to fill the sky with a linear gradient of purple and used color overlay to tweak the sky color to my liking. Now with the composition slowly coming into place, it's time to start the refining process to make things look authentic. And a large proportion of this process lies in texture overlaying. To make the ground look believable, for example, I placed copious amounts of tiling textures, carefully worked to fit the perspective using the distort tool onto our previously defined ground area. The next thing I did was to drop some entourage some figures into the scene to direct the audience's attention. The most dominant program in the composition is obviously the gymnasium, so I thought it would be interesting to drop in some basketball playing figures to enhance the whole scene. Now a quick google image search of basketball playing people PNG is going to return you with tons of results, and which image to choose is really just a matter of correct shot angles. To make the figures look convincing, oftentimes it is necessary to lower the color saturation and opacity because of the principle of atmospheric perspective, which dictates that objects that are further away from us tend to be dimmer and grayish in color. I also built a custom Photoshop action which allows me to create drop shadows in an instant to help speed up the shadow creation process. 
As for the swimming area, I had trouble finding the ideal PNG cutout for a swimmer, so I ended up just placing two males standing by the pool. With the two major interior programs properly decorated with people, the exterior ground area suddenly appears rather empty. Therefore, I place a dog walking couple to liven things up, which is very fitting considering the current site is being used as a dog park. Once again, just to make the figures look convincing, I also tuned down the color saturation and opacity and used the burn tool to darken one side of the figures to conform to the source of light in the scene. Now I did consider photoshopping in a pair of basketball hoops into the scene just because right now it looks like the kids are shooting their balls against nothing. However, I didn't follow through because I couldn't find proper images that have the right shot angles. After that's done, I proceeded to overlay some high resolution masonry textures to the retaining wall to make the stones look proportionally correct. And to compensate for the lack of action in the sky, I placed a full moon which was done by dropping in a full moon PNG and touched the moon up with a thin dab of yellow using the brush tool. Now the scene is gradually coming into place, however the annexing line between the retaining wall and the ground kind of stands out. So to further suspend the audience disbelief, I placed some flower beds by first dropping in an image and later using the layer mask to block out the unwanted area. The next task was to construct the retaining wall on the left, which sounds kind of intimidating because we're literally making up structures from thin air from nothing. However, all I really did was to plan out the perspective framework beforehand and place some masonry textures I used for the right retaining wall here to construct the mass, after which the burn tool was used once again to bring down the value of the wall. To cover the bare horizon line in our scene, I placed some tree silhouettes along the horizon line. Now, in reality, there should be an array of residential houses there, but using trees was just way faster. The last major task I did was to refine the things that are above the retaining wall. One major improvement was the placement of guardrails, which was done by painstakingly cutting out a piece of guardrail from a photo using the lasso tool, after which I dropped in some figures and an array of lamp posts to make the composition more interesting. At this point, the whole scene is pretty much finished. I dropped a layer of yellow to give the composition a filmy look. One thing I found out was that oftentimes, giving your scene a strong dominant color really helps with, once again, suspending your audience disbelief. Of course, if your whole scene were to be software generated with perfect texture and everything, then this is not necessary because photorealism really requires appropriate white balance. However, since a good portion of this composition was artificially created, Color corrected a little bit makes the minor inconsistencies more forgiving, and there I say gives the whole scene a moody 90s Hong Kong movie aesthetics. And just to sum things up, when it comes to architectural visualization with Photoshop, your bread and butter really comes down to texture overlaying and finding and modifying the appropriate stock images. Even though more and more architectural firms are dabbling into the practice of communicating with their clients using VR or game engine real-time render, I would say a good grasp on Photoshop image manipulation is still a really necessary skill any architect should possess. So that's it guys, I hope you found this video to be informative. Please comment down below and subscribe to the channel, and I will see all of you in the next week's video. Bye bye.